All right, so we are over here at the machine. We are ready to stitch around our centers and petals. Um, and so we're, we went with the Raspberry Aurafil 50 weight thread because it will outline the petals very nicely and it'll blend in here on the center as well. So when I get ready to start doing a blanket stitch, the first thing I do is get the thread tucked under the foot and out of my way. And then I look at the shape and decide what is the best way to stitch this so that I don't have to keep breaking my threads. In this case, I think going around the center and around then out to the petals is going to be the easiest way to do this with the least amount of, um, of stopping and starting. I'm going to start right here, right on the circle, go around the circle, and then work my way around the petals. And that will keep it so I don't have to um, break my threads multiple times because um, sometimes you have to and there's no rhyme or reason but with these flowers it's always a nice easy way to do it. Now you could do the petals first and then the center but um, I'm going to do the center and I'm going to then do the petals. Um, you're going to want to tuck your threads under your foot. There is a um, you want to use the blanket stitch that's the one I like to use. You could use a zigzag or another foot um, the other decorative stitch but you want to use an open toe foot um, and the, you can see here there's no bar, there's nothing blocking it. You can see what you're doing and that's vital to doing edge stitching on anything. Um, so for the Bernina, it's the 20 foot for my um, 440, but you want to have an open toe foot. I can't stress that enough. So when you get ready to start, you're going to, I always hand crank the thread down and I bring it up to the top and on my foot there is a center line. And that center line should be on the edge of the fabric you're stitching because you want the blanket stitch, you want the straight of the stitch to go into the background and the bite of the stitch to go into the center. So here I am getting ready to start. Um, you can do one or two stitches and then you can back stitch if you're not going to go over it again or if you're going to go all the way around and meet your end, you can just do a reverse stitch. You do want to make sure if you have needle down on your machine as a feature that you have needle down, it'll act as a um, finger. It'll kind of hold it in place for you. So as we get started here, um, I'm showing you right here where the center of my foot is aligned with the center edge of the fabric. Um, most feet have a center line, so you just have to look at your foot and see if yours comes with it um, and that where you need to bite it into the circle. So I apologize, we lost the sound to this part of the video, so I'm doing this as a voiceover. So if my talking doesn't quite match, um, that would be why. But I wanted you to at least see what I'm doing. Here I'm snipping the end tails, the, the start tails, I'm just getting them out of my way before I get too far around the flower and I don't want to get them caught in my stitches. And you, I lift the foot and pivot a lot. Um, I, I do that, that's why the needle down is so great because the needle down will be locked into the, lock everything in place. I can lift the foot up as I'm getting, um, you know, if I can't just twirl it as I'm doing right here, I will lift up the foot so it'll glide underneath it a little easier and then rotate and then continue stitching. Um, so you want to do that to get around there and I'm going to go over my stitches, my first stitch. And that'll lock that first stitch with the last stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and finish stitching all of these petals and then we will be ready to assemble. So we've got all our daisies pressed and done and all of the stitching on them. So these are done as the blocks. And then the next step is to do the sashing piece.
pieced sashing that goes between the blocks, which looks like this. So how we do that, we have one two and three quarter inch fabric E square, and then we have two four and a quarter fabric G triangles. And the reason they're called four and a quarter is because originally there was four of them that came out of a four and a quarter square that we then cut across both diagonals. So then once you have those, those are gonna go on either side here. And then for fabric D, we have a three and seven eighths inch square cut across the diagonal to give us those triangles. So to sew this, you're going to first sew this triangle to this square. And when I did it, I started at the right angle and ended at the point. And your seam allowance, let's see how close we can get here. Your seam allowance should go right between the end of the triangle and the edge of the uh, square. So once you've done that, then you would press this towards the square. And then you're gonna add the second G triangle on here. Again, starting at the top, and your seam allowance should end right where the two triangles meet, that intersect point, and that's a quarter inch. And then again, we're going to press this towards the square. So we end up with this, and it looks like this. And you're gonna wanna clip these dog ears out of here, because any kind of excess bulk in your seams will make it harder when you quilt it. You can hit that with your needle when you're quilting and it'll mess up your quilting. So get rid of the dog ears. So now we have that piece and we're ready to sew the big blue triangles on. So one will go on each side like that. So we're going to align this one. Now, when I started the video, I said, go ahead and cut your dog ears off of these triangles when you're using the Pac-Man ruler, this ruler. I discovered that's probably not the best idea because it makes it harder to line up. So don't trim your dog ears off. But you line it here and here, put it in at the top here and sew down and you should end right at that point. Or if you had the dog ear, you would end right where the triangle intersects with the square. So then once you have one of those on there, you would press this towards the blue. And then we're ready to add our second one on, which lines up here. And you're going to again start it like at this end and sew out to your point. And then you have this and you're ready to press those both out. Now you'll see there's some dog ears on here. We're just gonna clip those and get rid of those because again, you just don't need them and it's just getting in the way. So then once you do these, you would make 14 of these. These are the C and H combo. And then you need to make 57 of these, which are the E D combo. And these become the unit fours. These over here are the unit fives. So then you're gonna take your 15 daisies and you're gonna sew one of these on either side to make our block. Once you have those done, then we're gonna sew things into rows to make the quilt top. So we're gonna go ahead and sew those. And when you're sewing these, make sure, cause the background, if you're using the same fabric as me, it's directional. So just make sure you keep the strips, either all stripes, all uh, vertical or all horizontal. You can decide, I like them vertical. So that's what we'll do. So we'll get the rows sewn together and get the quilt top done. And then we'll be back. So here we've got some of the units sewn together in the first four rows. So once you start sewing the rows together, they make, they form the block. I'm just going to keep sewing rows and sashing rows together until we have the whole quilt top done. So here is the Life is Beautiful quilt top all done. Let's get some close-ups in here. All the applique daisies. You can see how the darker pink made those flowers pop in the quilts. It's all pieced and ready to go. It's going to be quilted by Monica Chrome this time. I think we're just going to do like an all over floral. 
um, but I usually leave it up to them to decide. So uh, we will get it quilted and I will show you what it looks like at the end. Just got our Life is Beautiful quilt back from Monica Chrome. She quilted it for us. It is um, done with daisies and swirls and leaves. The quilt is featuring sunshine from Clothworks. Let's get a close up here of the quilting. You can see it's got daisies. It's beautifully done. Um, it's just an all over with a very pale pink, but it's all this quilt really needed because it has a lot going on. But I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to make the quilt, and I thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, make sure you like and su subscribe below. You can find The Whimsical Workshop on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com, and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us.